All right, hello YouTube. I'm going to show you today how to make your own PBR textures. Well, I've already shown you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it now with the new Material Maker tool and add it to your add it to the texture pack so you can easily access it again later on. So, first thing you want to do is download the Material Maker that suits your Blender version. I recommend 4.0 because that's what all the stuff's going to go towards in the future. All, my, all the tools I make are going to be made for 4.0. So I suggest upgrade to 4.0 if you're on 3.6. Download both of these. Texture pack and the material maker. So once you've got them downloaded. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum, I've lost it. There we go. So inside the zip you'll have this. You'll have the materials library shortcut. And you'll have the material maker dot blend. So we're going to open this file. And then once that's opened, change, I recommend changing this one to the, the last ball. I can't remember what it's called. Viewport shading, uh, render preview. So once you're here, zoom out of your nodes a little bit. I need to go get yourself a PBR texture. You've probably already got one. That's why you're watching the video. But I'm going to use this one here, the Space Crusader panel. So I've already downloaded this one. This is from freepbr.com. So I've downloaded this and inside of that we have um what do we have we have the albedo let me zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see we've got the albedo we've got the ambient occlusion we've got the height map we've got the metallic we've got the normal we've got the roughness so you're going to need each one of these images inside of this one here so open that folder again drag your color uh metallic roughness normal oh height and ambient occlusion you don't always have all these images but most you'll have normally just a color the normal and maybe a height map but if you've got the ones that fit one of these nodes then you just connect them up basically so the albedo is the color it could also be called color or something like that so then we've got the color, we've got the metallic, uh, we've got the roughness. It's this one, this is ambient occlusion. So AO goes into the AO input on here. We've got the normal. And we have the height map. The height map goes into the height map input. All right, so. so now you're thinking, how do I get this all to look? The size I want it to be and be able to control it. So you click on one of these and you've got to have a node wrangler enabled. Enable. So you go to your, I'm skipping ahead while I'm talking to this. So I'll go to edit, preferences, node wrangler, make sure the check marks turned on. So when you've got that enabled, you click on one of these and press control T. You get presented with these two, the texture coordinates and the map in there. So with this vector output, you want to connect that to the vector input and all these images. Right, so, oh, this vector, uh, vector, 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 and vector. So now, uh, let me try and clean this up just a little tiny bit because a little bit one. Oh, look at like, like, looking like that. You don't look inside some of my nodes because they can be very messy actually. I say it makes me feel sick, but that's why I put them in group. I can't really see them. So there we go, we've got the um cleaned up a little bit. Now on this mapping node, this is where you have the control of how the image looks. So with the scale, instead of just scaling one, which just does one dimension, or dimension one one aspect of the image, if you click on the top one and drag your mouse down when it's grey like that. Then you've got all three of them selected. Keep hold of the click, and then you can move right to left. The bigger the number, the smaller the image, which is very strange, but and obviously the smaller the image, the smaller the number, the bigger the image is. But we want to go to we'll go for about five on this one. That's four point nine, but that's fine. Let's just say you want it a little bit shorter. You can adjust each one of these manually, like so. And then see the rotation, it's usually the Y rotation. Oh, no, maybe not. It's a Z rotation, sorry. 
And because it's on a ball, it looks terrible. But when you've got like a flat object, like a gun or a wall or a, a jacket or anything like that, you want to mess with the rotations a little bit to get it looking perfect how you want it, basically. So we've got the we've got it all set up, basically. Um, let's just say you've got a color like this and you want to be able to change from blue to something else. You press Shift A somewhere in this node area here. Shift A, search, type in hue. And then you drag this in between. See this yellow line that goes to here to here, uh, where the top left corner this is. See how it goes white when I move this over? That basically means that this won't intercept it. And you want to do that. You want to put it there. Now it's intercepted it. And when you change this hue value, you see it controls the color. Like so. so I can't remember what it was, but. Um, a nice color, that one there. So that's basically the image set up. And what did I say this um, texture was called? Let's base Crusader, I'll copy it. So to make sure this works in your baker and all that stuff, you see at the top of the screen here where you've got your, your base daisy texture. You need to rename this to the name of your texture. So I'm just going to rename the base part to Space Crusader. And you always need to have hyphen daisy texture at the end so the baker recognizes it. So once that's all done, you've got your texture set up. You can go to file, save as. I know. Before we do this, the important part file, external data, automatically pack resources. Then these images here will be linked to the Blender file rather than looking for the images on your computer when you, when you load it in again. Now that's done. Um, you can purge data as well if you wanted to, if you wanted to keep the file small. So see this, um, looks like a photo gallery icon up here. You click on that, go to orphan data and purge. And then it will say it's purging unused data blocks. There you go. That's cleared up your file a little bit. So it makes it a little bit smaller. Then you go back to view layer. So it looks like this. So that's everything sorted how I want it to be. So I go to file, save as. And when you open this material maker dot blend, you'll have a materials library shortcut. I'm going to click on that. And then this is going to be in the make a new folder. This is a category name. So I'm going to call this one sci fi. And inside of that, in this uh, bit at the bottom where you call the name, you paste the texture name actually. So you copy the whole texture name like this, including the daisy texture part. You paste it. And when you click away, it'll add the dot blend file for you. So then you save. Right, so the file is saved. Now you press F12 on your keyboard. Uh, press F12 on your keyboard. There you go. It'll hit a render now. So this will be a little preview image, what you see up here in a moment. Uh, when it glows, that's when it's done. Got like a little nice effect to it. Um, come on. There you go. So that's your preview image. You can go to click on image up here. Save as. And it will automatically take you to your sci-fi folder where you save the project. In, in here, you just press Control V, click away, it'll add the .png for you. Save. So now, if I um, move this texture off of here, and I click on the ball, and you don't see sci-fi in here. So what you do is you click this refresh icon, and then you'll have sci-fi, I believe, somewhere. Sci-fi. And there it is. So that's your texture you just made. You make sure your ball's clicked. Apply. I reimport. I shouldn't have reimported asset because I was still in the same bloody file. My apologies, guys. So let's go back into Blender. Let's pretend we're starting new. I didn't realize what I just did there. <laughs> yeah, so don't reimport asset. Don't do what I just did. That was just a demonstration purposes. But now, go back to the material preview. Go back to your daisy textures. Go to sci fi. The objects collect, select this, click apply. And there you go. You now have your sci fi texture. And if you go into your shading tab, it's exactly how you worked with it before. So now you can control the values and stuff here. Make it fit. Like so. Change colors. You can do all sorts of stuff with this now. So that's how you do your PBR textures with the new Blender 4.0. And I hope you enjoy this, guys. Leave a like if it did help you. And also subscribe and join the Discord. There'll be a link to anything I mentioned in this video in the description below. I've got bad memories. I'm going to watch this video back. And <laughs> just, just see what I have to link below. If I forget anything, let me know. And I'll, I'll update you with the links. Thank you very much for watching.